Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Next thing, we're just going to be animating this door. So we're going to be going in and um, creating, first of all, a an animation for this first door. Okay, so we're going to be using the matinee and then um, calling that matinee and referencing it in the blueprint, which is then going to initiate the animation using a trigger box. So we're going to not animate the first door, right? Because there's nothing outside there. There's nothing outside, so we're going to be keeping that door closed. But this door just here, we're going to animate. So we're going to click on that door. We're going to go to matinee, add matinee. And what you want to do when this window pops up, just make sure that you have the door selected. Because what will happen is it will deselect the door and it will select the matinee actor icon, which will be in your viewport somewhere. So you probably want to pull this over and place it right in front of the door right now. Okay, so do that just so you know that that matinee actor, that icon is for this door. Just cleans up your workflow a little bit so you don't have icons sort of, you know, at random positions in your environment. So now we're going to click the door. We're going to go and right click in the tracks menu just here. We're going to go to add an empty group. I'm going to name this uh, door. I can call it a cinema entrance door if you want to be really specific with it. Then we're going to right click that and we're going to go to add a movement track. So it's not an animation track. Make sure you go to movement track. Now with this set, we need to actually set the um, duration that our animation is going to play for. So right now, the timeline, if we just scroll out of here with the middle mouse button, it goes all the way down to the end. Now I do have a video which shows how to animate a door and stuff, but I thought I'd go through it again anyway, just very quickly, um, just as a recap in case you didn't see that tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead. It can be quite tricky to select um, these little points here. You want to make sure you move the red point over to, let's say three, because I'm going to make my um, door animation last three seconds. Also move the green one over to three as well. Okay, so zero to three, both the red and the green point. Uh, which is the end of the timeline and the active timeline are both set on the same point okay which is great so now what i need to do is once the movement track is in i can go over to number three which is that three seconds press the enter key and you'll see that it says adjust key movement just here i'm going to go on to rotate and i'm going to be rotating the door in an open position okay so i'm going to go 120 degrees uh, and make sure that every door that i animate is going to be done exactly the same Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to play now just to make sure that that's worked. So that's working pretty pretty well. Um, once that's done, you can effectively close that down and you can hit Control S to save your project. Okay, because if you just go to save just here, that's going to be saving your current level. You want to make sure you go to save all, which is Control S, as you can see just there. All right, so the next thing we're going to be doing is dragging in a trigger box. I'm going to drag in that trigger box from the basic um, panel just here. So box trigger, should, should I say. Uh, and I'm going to be scaling this because one thing we want to do is if you wanted to come back into this room from uh, this room just here, you want to make sure that the gap that the trigger box is slightly bigger on the inside of this room because the door is going to be opening into the room. So you don't want to be flat up against the door like this and then open it because it's going to clip and it's going to have a, a few issues there. So you want to make sure that you set this trigger or this box trigger a little bit bigger um, in this particular room than this one. So something like that. It's slightly longer on, on this side, slightly shorter on this side. Okay, at that point, it's pretty much done. So now we're going to go in um, to the level blueprint. So we're going to go to blueprints, go down to level blueprints. And then we're going to first of all, um, we're going to add in a couple of different um, uh, bits of code. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing, um, in fact, we've forgotten one important step here. We need to go into settings. We go down to project settings and then we're going to go to input. Within input, we're actually going to set up an input for the interact action. Okay, so right now, under bindings, you find action mappings, there won't be any. I've got rid of the jump, okay, so don't worry too much about that, um, because I, I didn't think within a, a virtual gallery, jumping should really be something that, that you do, You're just going to be walking around and observing all the work that, it's kind of like a virtual portfolio, basically. So, um, so we're going to go and hit the plus, then you can expand it, and then we're going to name this interact. Okay, because this is going to be the key to interact with things in various different ways, like doors and sounds and, and other things. And then we're going to go down here where it says none keyboard, and we're going to set the E key. Obviously, you can set any key that you like, um, but that's what you want to do. Set that up as E. Okay, so save that again. And then we're going to go into the uh, blueprints and then the level blueprints. 
So first thing I'm gonna call on, I'm gonna right click and type in interact because that is the action event that I just set. So we're gonna click on that. Below, I'm gonna make sure that, that the box trigger is selected and I'm gonna be typing in on actor, begin, overlap, there we go. And if we just type in end, overlap, then it should come up anyway. So on actor end overlap. So we've got the on actor begin overlap and on actor end overlap. Just make sure that within the um, brackets just here that it says trigger box just there. Okay. One thing that actually while I'm here, just a bit of housekeeping is if you call this just trigger box, you might have various, well, we will have a lot in our environment. So you don't want them all just called trigger box one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna name this again. So I'm gonna call it trigger box, but then put uh, like a, an, an extension onto that. I'm gonna call it cinema door. So I know that that's the door that goes into the cinema room. Okay, and it's the same with the matinee as well. So if you go into matinee, start it with matinee, but then I'm gonna call it cinema door. Okay, just so I know that that particular matinee, because again, if we create different ones for all the doors, that's going to be called matinee one, two, three, four, five, etc. And then, then you wouldn't know which is which. So by doing this, always start it with matinee and start the trigger box with trigger boxes. That way that they're all going to be grouped within your world outliner. Okay, else you also will be scattered around and it'll be really difficult for you to figure out what's what. So now going back in here, we're going to click onto that um, box trigger and make sure that you add um, these bits of code in there. So let's just go into open level blueprint, uh, maybe get rid of these and add them again because we've changed the name of it. So we want to make sure that it um, begin overlap. There we go. So now it says trigger box cinema door and overlap. And then we've got on actor end overlap. Okay, so that's all fine. Next thing, we need to actually bring in, um, let me maximize this for you. We need to bring in from pressed, we're gonna go to gate. So we're gonna bring in a gate, effectively saying that you enter the gate by pressing E, or that will initiate, and the gate will be open only when, you're, when you begin the overlap with the trigger box. So basically when you're within that trigger box, the gate is open. And with here on actor end overlap, the gate will be closed when you walk out of that trigger box. That way the function will not occur, it won't work. So now we're gonna go from exit, we're gonna drag out. We're gonna go with a flip flop because a flip flop will allow us to um, toggle between two different um, functions or executions. So the first one is gonna be for us to play the matinee. So that's gonna be playing the animation so the door opens. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to um, find the matinee I'm gonna drag that into my blueprint and then I'm gonna be referencing from here. I'm gonna be dragging out from the matinee cinema door, play and also reverse. Okay, because we want it to play and then reverse. Okay, so let's say flip flop A goes to play. So when you press the E key once, it's gonna play and open that door. But if you go from B to reverse, what's gonna happen is it's gonna effectively um, go to reverse the animation if you press E again. Okay, so that's fine. But you can also have uh, the door closing um, after a set period of time. So if you just drag out from A, in fact, what we need to do is drag out from the end of play. So I'm gonna drag out from the end of play. We're gonna put on a delay. So after the animation plays, we're gonna add a delay of maybe five seconds. And then that, when that delay finishes, it's actually gonna reverse the animation. So basically when you press E once, it's gonna play the animation of the door opening. It's gonna then delay for five seconds. You can set that up to whatever value you want and then it's gonna complete. And once it's delayed for five seconds, it's gonna to go to reverse the animation. But also we can still press E again to manually close the door as well. Okay, so that's still connected. So we can compile that and let's test that quickly. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna play. Now just to show you, if I press the E key various times, it's gonna allow me to close and open that door. If I just open that door once, let's see if it closes by itself. There you go, so that's done. So if I was to open this door, let's go in. Okay, I'm gonna have a look around. I'm looking at all the wonderful bits of artwork in here and the door closes by itself, which is fantastic. All right, so the process is exactly the same on every single door, um, so you just need to take that same process and apply it to every single door. You will have to add a new matinee and a new box trigger to each door 
Um, there are different ways to do it, but for now this is going to be probably the easiest way to do it and quite a quick turnaround um, in getting it all done as well. Okay, so if you want to make sure you get that done. One thing I should show just before I go is to add collision. I can't remember if there is any on there, but I don't think there is any on the door. So what that means is that you could walk straight through the door anyway. So if I just keep walking, you can walk through the door, which is no good. So what you do is you double click on the door in your content browser, which is the do not add in yet door. Uh, and then you're going to go up to collision and you're going to um, do a simple like a box simplified collision. But right now you can see that it's too wide. It's actually using the end of the handles um, to, to determine the width of that um, box collision. But, if we, but we can actually select the collision box and we can go to scale. And then you can just scale it in a little bit. Obviously if it snaps like that, then turn off snapping completely and then we can customize it. What I suggest is you make it slightly wider than the door itself because that's gonna allow, just to make sure that your player doesn't clip through the door. It's just very, 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 very slightly um, bigger or wider than the door itself. So now if I go in and play, should notice that we can no longer walk through the door. Okay, so that's now completely solid. It's done. Okay, so we can't walk through it. Done. And then it's going to close after five seconds. All right, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video, guys. And yeah, make sure you smash the like button and do subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next virtual gallery tutorial.